please welcome to the stage, Chat Center. Hi there, uh, I'm Keith Tier from Chat Center, and uh, we address a structural problem that arises through the success of mobile. That structural problem looks like this. We have about two billion people with these today, soon to be four billion. The business owners who own these, their content remains on the web, and most of their customers who discover them, discover them still through a web page. That leads to a problem. How does a web visitor looking at a product or a service connect to the mobile business owner and ask questions? Well, not through phone calls anymore or through voicemail. JP Morgan just closed theirs down. Interesting. Well, we seem to have come up with an answer to that question because we have great traction. This is our user growth this year. This is the number of daily sessions that those users are engaged in, the number of chat sessions, uh, and the number of page views, which is a, a multiple of the chat sessions that it gives rise to. Year-to-date growth is about 4,000% measuring uh, sessions, about 1,600% measuring users, and about 3,000% measuring the page views. That's straight from Google Analytics. And the month over month, last 30 days, as of yesterday, is still pretty impressive. So it's growing all the time. So what have we done? Well, it's a very, very simple idea, and there's nothing to install for the person initiating the chat with the mobile phone owner. But it's a powerful idea, and it turns the owner's smartphone essentially into a call center for their customers. It's called a simple universal chat address. Now, we all know what a universal address is. Our phone number is universal because if someone knows the number, they can make your phone ring without knowing anything else. And an email address is universal because if somebody knows your email address, they can get it delivered to your inbox without knowing anything else. But chat, mobile chat, is not universal. It's at that stage of history you know, where the operator still has to plug in the cable or where before the internet, Email only worked within the enterprise, not between enterprises. Mobile chat is siloed into WhatsApp, big silo, I'll grant you that, WeChat, Kik, and so forth. It's at the stage of history which is its pre-birth. A simple universal chat address is universal because knowing the address is enough to reach the person. This is what it looks like, and it makes you reachable on any device at any time. And it looks like this. That's mine, by the way. If you send me questions, this will buzz. That is a URL. And because it's a URL, it can use your domain name. So it can look like this. By the way, note, there are 270 million domain names in the world that people pay for because they care about their names. So by unifying the URL with a mobile chat system, that can be initiated from the web or an email, or in fact, anywhere you can put a URL, we've created this possibility, where from a LinkedIn profile or a Facebook profile or a, or, or a website or a Twitter account, this business owner can be sat at Pete's having a coffee talking to her customers. If you think about what URLs did for the relationship between pages, the trillions of interactions a day where page A is linked to page B, Think what a universal chat ID using the URL could do for the relationship between people and businesses. It brings mobile messaging to global businesses, no matter how small the business. It's particularly good for one-person businesses with websites. The product is turning names into links. And everybody has a name. Businesses have names and people have names. There's three ways to implement. You can take some JavaScript and put a widget on your site on the right-hand side there. You can simply put a URL, which is great for a business card or a video. Or you can put a click to chat button, again, JavaScript, on your site. The advantages of this system are manifest. It links the web to mobile and therefore allows click to chat. 
It links social media to mobile through the same mechanism. We're the, we're the cloud service in the middle, by the way, a SaaS service. It links apps that don't have chat, that implement us, with apps that do. So you can build support for your own app users using us. It links email to mobile, so your MailChimp campaign can have a human being at the other end when the person clicks, closing them or helping them. And of course, like all chat clients, it works mobile to mobile. If you and me both have our app, we can talk to each other. It's got a very familiar user interface. It looks like iMessage or Hangouts. It works on the Apple Watch with canned responses. It's $3.99 a month for a chat ID. We sell the IDs, the names. The service comes free to ID owners. On $9.99 a month, if you'd like your ID to support group chat, not just one-to-one. -one. The context, uh, I'm a name guy. I, I, was, uh, I started EasyNet, the UK's first ISP, back in the mid-'90s. We IPO'd after 15 months, and then I invested in NetNames, the first domain name registrar that sold domain names for network solutions in those days. Then moved to the Valley and created Real Names, which became uh, a unicorn during 1999, filed for an IPO with Morgan Stanley, and led strategic planning at Verisign twice, actually, in these years and, and, and again four years later, who, of course, owned the .com domain name system as the, as the wholesaler. And I co-founded TechCrunch, which has absolutely no relevance here, but Eric made me say it because he used to work for TechCrunch. Thank you. And uh, Keith, uh, chat.center slash Keith, if, if you have any questions from the audience. OK, thank you, Keith. <laughs> and we're seeing uh, you know, Keith, uh, Chat Center, and, and some of the other companies here uh, you know, are, are demo alums as well um, from uh, previous uh, demo events, and it's great to see them come back on stage uh, after they, they're gaining traction. Why don't we start uh, with you, Rob? Um, yeah, so how, how recent is this, your, your company? Um, the short answer is we, 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 we started doing this in April last year okay. and uh, failed miserably to find product market fit until April this year. We, th we, 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 we believe in universal chat, and we thought it was a consumer app initially, but most of our early adopters who really loved it were small businesses. Mm -hmm. And it took us, we were pretty stubborn, a little bit of time to learn from the customers what the real value was here. Yeah. Uh, since we've done that, we abandoned all free service, and it's just taken off. So you need a mobile app to receive the chat? You do. Uh, well, actually, you can log in on a website and get notifications in Chrome and Safari as well. So we have, a, we have a web version of the mobile app, but there's a native app on Android and a native app on iOS. So you can choose. Carl? The one nice thing about having a centralized call center is you can be predictable about and consistent about what hours it's open, how long the, the wait times are. Sounds like you're going more after a sort of a small business, single proprietor, or maybe a few people, and it's the owner directly that's responding. What's the user experience like if the owner is busy, or it's at night, and so on and so yeah. forth. So we have a, a profile they fill in that says when they're likely to respond to a customer. So if they're, if they're asleep, for example, uh, the customer isn't shocked. Um, we, you're right about the small businesses. It, it's not very well known, but there are 23 million one-person businesses in the US alone where they file taxes as a business, not as an individual. And those 23 million almost entirely have websites. So it's a huge, it's, I think of it as like the Google AdSense opportunity versus the double click opportunity. It's a, a, a very, very large number of customers paying a little bit each per month, as opposed to a, a small number of large companies that say Intercom or OLAC would target. Got it, thanks. Will? As you go through your sales process and you're talking to targets, what objectives, uh, objections are coming up that you have to deal with? What, 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 what aren't people getting or yeah. what aren't they seeing that you have to address? Um, well, the first thing I should tell you is our sales process is kind of unusual. We, uh, we have crawled the web uh, for domain name owners that we think are small businesses. We started with the Whois database of 270 million domain names and we've whittled it down to about 30 million immediate targets where we have an email address, uh, a knowledge of the ownership of the domain, and a sense that this would be a target. And we email those people 
uh, saying, it's great that you have bought this domain name. It does www for your web. It does person at domain for your email. How about chat dot your domain for mobile chat so your customers can reach you? So it's, we are, we're a four-person team, uh, two engineers, a designer who, who's a, a world-class designer that designed the accordion app for Steve, Steve Jobs, and myself, I'm the product guy. So we are not doing, um, you know, we do not, not have a sales force. It's all direct mail. We are getting 50% open rates on those outbound emails, and one in a 1,000 become a customer absolutely guaranteed. And we are we, we, we starting with 30, 30 million. We think there's about 65 million actual targets worldwide. And we're doing about 10,000 of those a day. Uh, uh, to, we've mainly been doing it to learn so far. We have about 200 paying customers after a few months' work, by the way. So those graphs look very good, but the base is quite small at this stage. But we think we've now got an absolutely guaranteed engine to produce customers. So the objections are, number one, why did you spam me? Because some people, but I'll say the complaint rate is 0.2% max, so it's very low. But that is a complaint. I just own up to that because it is unsolicited email, although they, ha they need to have an email address on their website for us to be able to do it. So they're asking, in a way, for the email. Uh, and <laughs> they're it, asking for it. <laughs> they could get rid of the email if they buy our service, by the way. No one can do that anymore to them. Um, so that's number one objection. Number two is, can I do private groups? We don't have private groups yet. We can do public groups for like TV shows that want the audience to participate. And we, the Gilmore Gang every Friday on TechCrunch uses it, for example. Uh, the New York Tech Meetup uses it. It's a public group. Um, and we can do one-to-one -one for customer support or sales funnels, but we can't do private groups yet. So that's the second objection. The third objection is why do you take my credit card before I do the 30-day test? There's a 30-day free. We, we always tell them that we need to do that because there are really bad people out there who won't pay us if we don't. So uh, uh, we, we like to take the credit card, and, and that has not been a problem. It's a very small complaint. Those are the main complaints. It's a fairly primitive feature set right now. So more sophisticated users who are more inclined to do an OLAC or, or an intercom integration um, won't use us yet. But we'll, we'll, we'll probably get there eventually, but that's not our target right now. Okay, thank you so much for closing out the day. Big round of applause. Oh, one other thing, one other thing. Two. Go to our website, use the code DEMO, just DEMO caps. Uh, you can get a free account forever for the first hundred of you that do it before Monday. Uh, you will have to put your credit card in because I can't stop it doing that, but we'll never charge you. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Keith. Terrific.